Alrighty, this is my 2013 Chrysler Town and Country Touring. The van comes with a lot of features, but the one feature it did not come with, as the cars go by making noise, Grand Central Station here, Ooh, nice car. The one feature it does not come with is remote start. And I thought, hey, it'd be great to add an aftermarket remote start for those really cold days or those really hot days. But it was pointed out to me that you don't need to add aftermarket remote start. You can program the remote start into the car. Step number one was to buy new buttons for the key fob. This key fob, when I bought it, had all these buttons you see here except this one. The press twice or remote start button. But you can just replace this button pad and not any of the rest of the key fob and it'll add it. Now, to prove that there's nobody sitting in the car with the spare key fob, I'm gonna go ahead and open the door. We're gonna press the unlock button. There we go. And I'm just gonna attach this to my panty pack here for a moment so I don't lose this. Come on, get on there. There we go. All right, so let's wheel up here. Sorry, I know the view sucks, but it is my view. I'm low to the ground. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and open the car door and prove that there's nobody in here. Uh, we'll go ahead and open the slider too, just to make that point clear. Okay, so there's nobody in the car hiding anywhere. The driver's seat is turned sideways so I can transfer. And the vehicle is otherwise completely and utterly empty. So I'm going to try and hang on to the phone with my free hand. Close the front door. There we go. And I'm going to use the key fob again. Here it is. Close the sliding door. There we go. And I'm going to lock it up. I don't have the horn beep, but the doors did lock. So now I'm gonna just stand back here a little ways. Still doing this in one take. I'm gonna hold this up and hit double click. And the van started. Now what I don't know is if it'll stall when I open the siding the side door. Normally what would happen is you'd hit unlock climbing through the driver's side and the engine would keep running he would stick this in its slot turn it to run well let's see what happens when we open the sliding door because that's the way I always get in the van well there we go look at that it just continues to run cool well that's good to see so I'm just gonna go ahead and shut it off so I don't have to talk over it should double click it again excellent and yeah, we'll just go ahead and close the door Wait for it to close and we'll lock it up again. Again, I've disabled the horn so you don't hear that, just the click of the locks. All right, so that wasn't the only thing I had to do, but that was the first thing I had to do, was add these buttons. The uh, second thing I had to do was buy an ODB2 to USB cable, a little laptop, a cheapy refurb one, and app car. In the app car, I had to go into the wind module, WMS module, I believe, and tell it that I had a hood switch. And then I had to go in to uh, the module and tell it the vehicle had re factory remote start. I then had to copy the pin from that module and then store that pin on the main computer. That was pretty straightforward, and the internet's full of instructions on that. No point in posting it here. Uh, then I had a buddy of mine open the hood, fish out the cable for the hood ajar switch, attach the switch to the firewall or the fender on the driver's side there, and plug the cable into it. And that's all we had to do mechanically. Then it was just a matter of climbing in the vehicle, starting it up normally, taking it for a drive for about a mile, so I'm told. I'm not sure if that's actually necessary, but. It was a good opportunity and a good excuse to go for a ride. 
So we went for a ride, drove a few miles, got it back to the house and tried it out. And as you saw, it, it just worked. The grand total I think I paid to do all of this, including a new computer, which I was going to do anyway. Um, the cable, the software, and the hood, hood switch hardware was right up around, I want to say $450 by the time all was said and done done and that included the, the laptop computer so I didn't think it was too bad now yeah I could have gone after market and not had to have done any other changes to the van other than unplugging the cable behind the connector where the fob plugs in and putting this thing in parallel or series sorry but I thought it'd be kind of cool to have the the factory equipment but the one thing it doesn't have is the long range antenna under the dash plugged in into the WMS module, uh, which would give it, you know, 300 plus feet of range. But I live in a small house, and as you can see, my fan is not 300 feet away from my house, so I didn't think that was going to be an issue. And I can open the van from in the living room and such, so I can start the van from in the living room and such. But this is going to be a great option. It's kind of silly that Chrysler doesn't just go ahead and, and include it because there really isn't a big change. You're talking about a, a key fob button pad and a long-range antenna under the, under the dash plus that uh, a little cheap put a jar switch. You know, it only adds a couple of bucks to the total cost of the vehicle. And then you don't have to, you know, line them up and say, well, this one gets it, this one doesn't, blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, kind of neat. I'm pretty happy about it. It's starting to rain. I'm going to give this video an end.